This conference will now be recorded. Play along, kind of? Then it would be great for you to um, see on your own phone. So we're going to talk about the Twilla Ready app. So if you want, go to your app store or Google Play and search Twilla Ready app. So if you guys want to join, I'll let you give you a couple of seconds to do that. It's really easy. When I searched it, there was one above it, which is like weird, but there it's really easy to find. It has the Twilla Ready logo, just like this. And this is what the main front page has on it. So let me talk about that front page real quick. So the, see where the Twilla Ready app um, or logo is? That actually revolves. It shows the Twilla Ready logo. It shows the Twilla Response logo. Excuse me. It shows the Twilla Alerts logo. And then it shows the Twilla Response logo. And so anytime you can click on any of those logos and it takes you to that um, the Twilla Ready site that has all of those parts in it, the Twilla um, response.org and the Twilla Recovers.org. So it should take you right to the Twilla Ready sites that we have. And the next down underneath the logo, it says notifications. And probably next week, um, probably Tuesday, I'm going to send out a notification. So make sure that when you download your app, you sign up for the notifications. Obviously, I won't use it um, often, but I'll like share some of the things that are coming up. Like I'm going to share that CERT training is coming up in April and now would be a good time to start because it takes a little bit of time to do the online portion of the training. So, um, so that little notifications is going to be handy. I will be able to send emergency notifications too, but I would say make sure you get the Tooele alerts. The it's called Alert Sense. But I would say for sure, make sure you get that. But I can also send emergency notifications through our app, just as another added feature that they gave to us. So that next part is, let's see, hold on a second. I'm gonna, let's see, find. How come it won't let me move? Come on. Okay. Won't let me change the. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Why is it not working? You know, I just love when things just are going my way, huh? Well, let me. So sorry, everybody. There. I'm going to try again. And I'm going to turn my camera off so you don't have to look at me the whole time. Okay, let me share my screen again. Share. And see if it'll go next. Next. I guess I'm gonna have to just do it the this way. Darn it. Okay, so underneath that that um, 
logo, it says notifications. And then underneath that, it says make a plan. And this is where it gets personal for you because you can make your own family plan. So it goes make a plan and you can click into family plan and you can put information about your family members. So that third column right is the information that you can put in. So if you're somewhere and you don't have some of the information that you might need, you can just look it up on your phone. And just so you know, none of this information comes to us. It is only on your phone. See down here at the, at the bottom here, you can email your plan to somebody so somebody else can have access if you ever need it, you know. But um, we don't get anything. None of this information goes to us. It stays right on your phone. And it should just um, be able to go to your next phone. I have yet to transfer my stuff to my new phone, so I haven't tried. Anyway, so that next part, you can put your family member contact and you can have as many family members as you want. If you want to put grandma and grandpa and any neighbors even, you can totally do that. And it might be a good idea to have other people. Like if you're a caregiver or if you have a neighbor that you take look after every once in a while, it might be helpful to have this information for emergency needs. Then you can um, add an emergency contact and it can, they always say have an out of state contact because the lines may be um, plugged up. And I would say the best thing to do would be to text because that goes on a different wavelength than regular um, phone calls and way, way quicker. Also, whoops, let me make this shit up. Let me try and... Oh, come on. Oh. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now I should be able to. Okay, this one right here is the last part of the um, family plan. And you can add different meeting points. All of this, once you've entered it in, can be emailed in your family plan to whoever you might. So. Then, Robin, mine doesn't say mine doesn't give an option to email at the bottom. At the bottom of the family plan part. Yeah, when you go where it says family plan, or even when you go into you know add family members. Yeah. So, right down here, it's at, under family plan at the very bottom. Yeah, mine doesn't say that. It says add family member. So go go back. So after you've added, go back, and then you, you'll see in under family uh, plan. Okay. Emergency plan. So yeah, hopefully it does. It, does. Work. it it did work when I first did it. I haven't ever, I haven't emailed anybody for a while. My plan. So it should work. If it doesn't, please let me know, because we need to get that fixed. So if it doesn't email your plan, please let me know, okay? So after the make a plan, there's the protective actions. And then the protective actions are evacuation, shelter in place and standby. And those are just different things that you can do in an, an emergency. Usually you'll be able to be told what to do. Like if, if there's a fire coming, you'll be told to evacuate if there's some sort of um, plume or whatever, they'll tell you to close up all your doors, put 
um, towels where there's any holes and shelter in place into your most interior room. Or if there's like, remember the Boston um, explosion that happened during the race and days after people had to shelter in place because they were looking for the guy. So that's a shelter in place um, protective action. And then stand by is kind of just be in a holding pattern, wait to see what you're gonna be told. The next one is insurance. And you can see any um, any type of insurance and you can save your insurance. You can take a picture of the cards. So if you ever need a picture or whatever, it'll be right there on your phone. And remember, none of this goes to us. So it's helpful um, to have it on your phone instead of, you know, just in some file that you might need to know. Because there are people who aren't home when something happens to their home. So it's very beneficial to have the information right there on your phone. That's one of the lessons we learned in the 2016 fire is many people had their insurance information on paperwork in their home, but their home burned. So it was one of the things that people said they wish they had on their phone. And then one other thing that we included is you can add your whole house by taking pictures um, before anything ever happens. And the insurance companies will love you because they would rather have pictures. They really like the model numbers and such, but they would rather have at least a picture of beforehand so you can prove that you had it. Because most of the time, if you can't prove that you had something, then they won't um, let you claim it. So really um, important thing for you to, to think about, like you don't have to put this stuff on your phone. We've just learned from past experiences, these are the things that people wish that they had. So we thought, well, let's make an app and let's do that. So the last thing, come on, is the hazard hunt. So there's different kinds of hazard hunts and this would be kind of a fun little family activity to do. We're going on a bear hunt and see what we can see. And you can go and check for electrical hazards or chemical hazards like if you have young, small ones, I just saw a picture today of this cutest little baby playing in this cupboard and all the vitamins and pill things were all over the floor. Luckily, they weren't opened, but not a safe thing, but cutest baby ever, but just not a safe thing. And then there's the fire hazard. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So my computer froze again. So I am going to shut it off and hopefully turn it back on to come back on. I don't know why my computer doesn't like this program. Because I, and it's fine with Zoom, and I guess I should use Zoom, but the county pays for our go to meeting, so we might as well use it. So I'm so sorry. So I'm sorry that you have to see my screen in my computer. I wonder if there's a way to shut it off. Anyway. 
So the next part of the app is the ways to help. So you can click on ways to help. And let me see if, let me get to mine. Oh, it's be informed. So there's the hazards guide of the disasters that we experience here in Utah, like hazardous weather, obviously, fires, obviously, and I'm worried because we had a really dry winter, and then public health emergencies, hazardous materials, earthquake, which we never know, and then terrorism could possibly be another one. So those are the main hazards. I didn't put all of them. If you really want to see all the hazards, then you can go to the Toilet Ready, um, the Toilet Ready website, and it has a couple more. So let me log back in. Anyway, so great information to have. Then there's coping with disasters, which is information we found from the. Um, now my head's blinking me, but it, to help with um, coping with disasters. Okay, let me see. Sorry. And then recovery information sends you to a um, the TCEM site that we will put on the website if there's something you need to know, like. Hopefully you will have signed up for Tooele Alerts to get the information, but we'll put whatever disaster information we can on our website. The best thing would be to, um, okay, let me see if my screen will share. Okay. Yeah, you're hearing me twice. Let's, oh, I didn't get the PowerPoint in. I hate when technology doesn't work. Okay. We're back in my PowerPoint. Let me just see. I'm going Okay, now can you hear me? Okay, the next part is evacuation and this one is probably my most favorite because it gives you an opportunity to think about what you would really want to have if you had to evacuate. So it gives you the opportunity to think, okay, if I only had two minutes to get out of my house, what are the most important things that I would want to get? And you'd want to share that with your family. So you can click on each of these and it will give you, um, it will give you the opportunity to choose if it's a high or a low priority. And you can say what the item is, where it's located and who's responsible. So, Share your plans so if you're ever not home, somebody else can have the information that is on your phone. So very, very um, good preparedness plan is to think about those things that absolutely you would want to have if you ever had to evacuate. The Colorado fire that just happened in December, which is the weirdest thing ever because it was in December. 
I talked to the um, Boat guy that's over there, and and um, the guy was saying where the houses were were affluent, but often older people. So one of the things the late a lady was saying is she called her neighbor and said what's going on over there and the lady the older lady looked out and said there's a fire and so the lady on the phone said would you go get my cat and as you're evacuating so the older lady went to go get the cat the winds were so enormously strong that they couldn't um, get the door open. And by then the um, fire department or the police, I couldn't remember which, came and said, you have to evacuate now. So the poor lady, the older lady has this death of a cat guilt and so sad, but I'm glad that the neighbor knew to call the other neighbor and that is, makes all the difference is to have neighbors know about each other to help in a, in a disaster like this. So there were actually quite a lot of stories of neighbors helping neighbors get out and be able to um, help one another. And no one died, which is so good, but it was a very odd um, fire because usually it happens in summer, not winter. So then the next part is the get a kit. And we have, come on. I don't know why it clicks so slow. We have all different kinds of, of the list for all these different kinds of kits. So you'll see on the right hand side, the list goes longer than what on the left hand side but there's like a checklist. So if you're at the store, you can like look on that and say, oh yeah, that's right. I needed this for my whatever kit, you know? And as you're going through your important documents, there's a list of almost everything you would need. It's not comprehensive because everybody's different, but it's the most common, um, supplies that someone would need. The next, so see there, here's the list of the important documents. It goes longer than that. And then first aid kit, it's a very um, simple, but pretty thorough first aid kit list. And then your vehicle kit, which I would really encourage everyone to have a vehicle kit because you saw just last month, when the storm went through Washington DC area and 50 miles of cars were stranded for 20 hours. And those that had something in their car were so much better off. And it was so cool to see a bread company guy going around giving people bread. But you need, in a cold storm, you need blankets and a way to keep warm and different things. So. That vehicle kit is really important to have. So the next thing you can go down to the, it says, um, it says, I'm clicking it, preparedness guide. And this is the 62 page preparedness guide. It's right here on your phone. You can read it. You can also download it on tcem.org and tuilaready.org. And also we have the business preparedness guide that you can download also from there. But it's right here on, in your phone if you wanted to read the whole thing. Most everything in it is covered through the app, but if you wanted to just read stuff, there it is right for you to read the whole entire 62 pages. The next is the, um, the get informed. Did I lose you again? Whoops. 
my mouse was having problems. So the next part is um, get involved. How can you help? The best way is cash. Money can do so much more than stuff. Stuff has to be sized and put somewhere and you know we have to figure out where it can go. Cash can be donated and things can start quickly happening. And we have for Tooele Responds a way that you can donate and it, it will go to helping the um, people who need the help. And you can go to our um, website, the Tooele Responds website and right there is our Venmo and we also have PayPal. You can also donate at the Zions Bank and just say, I'd like this to go to Tooele Responds and it, it'll go right to our Tooele Responds and it will get to work so much faster than stuff will. Because although stuff is good, it just takes room and time and organization. Money can get right to work. So if you don't want to donate to Tool Response, there's other organizations or you can put even humanitarian efforts on your tithing slip and help there because anytime there's a disaster, there is a need for money for to get the economy going. So the next thing, ask before donating any supplies. Our best way to let people know is going to be through Facebook. So I hope that everybody follows Tooele County Emergency Management on Facebook. We're also on Twitter and we're also on Instagram. Um, and we'll, we'll do those things too, but Facebook is just the quicker way. So if you wanna know something, that's where you'll be able to find most of the information. Respond by volunteering with local relief. So often, if it's big enough, we will open up a volunteer coordination center and be able to um, have people help once we know where the help is needed. Um, often you can donate your time with your church, but we would really love for people to come join Tooele Responds because we need trained people to be able to handle certain things that need to happen. And if you visited our website, you can see on the ways to help list, it's, there's a list on the right hand side of ways you can help of, to become trained and know what to do and how to help. And when you're trained, then you can get right to work instead of say, what, do, what can I do? You can just start doing, because we'll call you and say, this is what we need you to do. Please get to work. So it's, it's a great opportunity and we really, really need people. We cannot do what we need to do without people. So I highly encourage everybody to talk to your neighbors and talk to the people that you um, are in your neighborhood. That If you're an emergency preparedness coordinator, talk, tell them about Tooele Response and the opportunities for training and exercises that we're gonna do. So CERT training is coming up in April and I've sent out um, our flyers and I hope you're sending them out to everybody because we need to do the training and we can't do it without at least 10 people. The last time we had CERT training, we only had four or five sign up. It's a team effort. So we need people to, um, to sign up to come be CERT trained. And it is so empowering. It's like one of my most favorite trainings I've ever been to because it empowered me to take care of my family and help in my neighborhood. So it was, it, I would say that's one training that everybody should go to. So obviously become trained. If we're having CPR classes, I've sent out, um, on social media, the dates for those, and I can resend them in our email this week too. And like I said, cash and goods are helpful, but cash is the best. So, quick. The next part is the recovery part. So this is the brand new part 
that we just barely added. It didn't used to be there. But one of the things that we want people to start thinking about more is the recovery side of a disaster. Because when you can know how to recover and what kind of to expect, you'll do better and you'll be able to bounce back better. We're wor working really hard to um, start working with partners in the community so that we can have connections for a long-term recovery group because that is the key to making sure our community bounce, bounces back. If you ever want some good reading, there is um, a whole article from the people of Joplin that their long-term recovery group and how they were able to bounce back because of the community efforts and the people who made a difference in the recovery process. And you can find that on our um, Tooele Ready page under the recovery part, or you can go to tooelerecovers.org and find all that information. It's also, um, it's also, I think, listed in the resources that I'll show you in just a minute. So the next part is the what to do after. And look at all those lists of the things, what to do after. I would say though, read it before so that you can have the information that you need and prepare for what you could do to recover. So we're hoping it will help and it's a lot of information, but knowing beforehand makes a lot of difference in the recovery process. So even if you don't read everything, just a little bit here and there has, oh, it's just got so much great information. Just having that information and knowing that you can access it helps, I think. So the next part is the, come on, click, is the mental health Part. And this is probably my favorite because mental health before, during, and after a disaster is so critical. And the my most favorite part is these this list of ways to nurture yourself and reduce stress, which we should be doing now to help in the recovery, in our recovery efforts for later because it's so important to have resilient mindset and to give ourselves the opportunity to bounce back. So the next C on the left there is tons of uh, websites that where I got the information for the recovery um, part of our app. And there's, like the list goes down longer, but my screen could only catch one little part. And then on the bottom in that little red like oval, you'll see that there's little buttons down there. The traffic will go to our Tooele traffic website, which has the cameras for each of the cameras that are in Tooele County. The weather will go to the weather um, website, like the National Weather Service. The contacts are these contacts for on the right here for fire, police, health department, emergency management, local, um, state, and national. So it it has phone numbers that you can call right from your phone that has these contacts, and they're not 911 contacts. They're like, if you need to get a hold of the sheriff for some reason, it's the their number. And the last one right there, you'll see it, say, it says send photos. Um, you can, when you down, when you click on, on it, it'll ask you, we'd like to give, take, um, have access to your camera because every, every app has to ask for your access now. This doesn't go to us unless you send it to us. You'll see right here on the right, so I took a picture of my computer there, and you'll see on the right this 435-833-8181. That's our text number 
for Tooele County Emergency Management. So it'll go straight to that number. But if you ever need to text, that's the phone number that. Hey, Robin. Used with. Yes. Real quick, I'm looking at my app and it just says photo. It doesn't say send photo. Is there an update to the app? So I've had mine for quite a while. Because um, it's you take a picture and then it should go to your your text as like a text and it should go to this number. So it doesn't. No, mine just says photo. It doesn't say send photo. And then when okay, I do click on it, it just opens my uh, camera. It doesn't. Right. Actually... So take the picture. So okay. you don't have to send it, but take the picture and then it should pop up. Does it? Let's see here. Okay. Yep. It does say send photo. Say yep, that again. It does say send photo. Okay. So you have to take the picture before it'll. Okay. I was just looking at the bottom there. It just says, you know, you have the contacts and it says send photo. And mine just says photo. Oh, that's a weird Ouch. noise. <laughs> um, so it it doesn't it doesn't look like this, right there. It doesn't say send no. Mine photo. it doesn't say send photo. It just says photo. That's why I was asking, was there okay. an update to the app? Yes, yes, okay. there was. I may have update. to I may have to take mine so out and reload it. Old, yeah, if you have the old version. You will need to update your app. Yes. Okay. Just didn't give me that option when I brought it up. Yeah. In your app store, or your Google Play, it'll tell you if you need to update it. So if it doesn't work, please let me know because the only way I know is if people let me know if their app is working or not, and then I can fix it. But I've done it. I've tested it, I've had other people test, and it should work. But if it doesn't on your phone, then let's figure out why it doesn't, okay? Because okay. it should be pretty general um, for most phones, but if it doesn't work, let's figure it out, okay? So okay. for anything, everybody, if something doesn't work, please let me know and update your app if you've had the app for a while please update it we've we've added the notifications and the recovery information just recently i did notice one thing today that needs to be updated again so we might have to do an update um in a little bit then one last thing is on the main page at up at the top it says i'm safe and so you can click on that and you can Type in a little text and you can click on email or text message and it'll send to whoever you want saying I'm safe and you can add whatever message you want. It's just um, just a feature, but most of the time you'll probably just use your regular phone because you're used to texting whoever you're closest to. But it's just an added feature that you can use. So anyway. So that is our that is our app. I mean, it's so full of information you could read for days and days. But it's an opportunity to get some information to be able to have it with you and have the reference. So I'm gonna turn on my camera. Does anybody have any questions about the app? For the most part, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I hope that everybody will take the opportunity to download it and play with it and send your family your plan and let them know. Um, I have my sister in Georgia, my other sister in um, Oregon, and my mom in Wyoming, and I had them download the app because it's got pertinent information for everybody, and they can save their own plans to their own phone. So the only thing that wouldn't work really great for them is the local phone contacts. They don't want to know Tooele County um, 
sheriff's office and health department, you know, that's the only thing. Everything else applies to everyone else. So there are other apps that are a lot like this one. And Utah County's app is a lot like this one. It doesn't have our Tooele Respond stuff and the recovery, but um, it's got a lot of information because they use most of what we had for our app. So spread the word, let people know about it because the more people know and have in their brain, the more their brain can access to know how to respond correctly instead of, I don't know what to do, you know. So reading that information, although I admit it's a ton of information and a lot of reading, take it in little little bites and just a little bit. In my research is doing that, I learned quite a number of things like that I didn't know before. So it was quite helpful to me. So. Robin? Yes. Is that recovery information going to be on your website? So yes, we have actually more than just what's on our app. We have all that stuff that's on our app and then some on the re TooelaRecovers.org. Or you can get to it from the Tooele Ready website and click on the Tooele Recovers logo. So okay, we have... Say that again. I just said thank you. I would like to look at that further. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a ton of information. There's recovery information for schools and businesses and um, government. And so there's lots because we want to be the resource for everybody to kind of come to know what they need to do. We have a lot of new government people in Tooele County and we're trying to train them about what things they need to do should a, a disaster happen in Tooele County because not the same people are in office as they were before so great opportunity to learn more great opportunity to share please please share Tooele responds and come and train with us come and get trained like you don't have to do everything you can choose whatever you want to be or do and you you don't even have to become trained but let me say this if you are trained you will get called quicker to be able to help than if you're not because you'll be if you just say yeah I'll help then we don't have your skill set and we don't know for sure where to put you yet but if you've been trained, we know exactly what, where you can help and exactly what you can do and put you to work immediately instead of having to go through the volunteer coordination center. So, and if you have any questions about any of the Tooele response stuff, please let me know because I am, I'm over Tooele response even from here. I like coordinate it all, but we have people doing um each little section so that nobody has to be overwhelmed with anything i do the coordinating and you can do the the work that needs to be done and the training isn't hard and actually most of the time it's a lot of fun but like i said before cert training is the best training i ever ever took so i hope you encourage people to take that cert training um so one more thing um, I just want to emphasize is our Tooele County Emergency Management social media is really the easiest way to get information out to people and know what's going on with Tooele Response and Tooele County Emergency Management and also with the state. Like I sent out information about the Ready Expo. And also um, that they need help. Like if you want to go to the expo and you don't want to pay, go volunteer to help. And I sent the, I think I sent the um, link, but if you want to help, let me know and I will send you the link because they need help. I 
when I lived there and it wasn't COVID, I helped every year and I learned and got in free and helped. And it was, it was a fun, fun two days because I usually helped both days because they needed it. And I got to meet some great speakers and some just great partners. It's really a fun day and you learn a lot. So I encourage you to go to that. Um, and that is on, I think, February 25th and 26th, if I can remember right. But follow Tooele County Emergency Management on social media, especially Facebook. If you're on Instagram, I put this stuff on Instagram too, Just not, it's just not as quick as Facebook. And I put it on Twitter, which Twitter and I don't like each other, but I still put stuff on Twitter. So is there any questions? Sorry, I bumped the table. Is there any questions that I can answer for you about the app or about our websites or anything that's coming up? Because we have um, we have CERT training in April, but in April also is the ShakeOut. And so I hope that you go to the ShakeOut website to register to be part of that, to drop cover and hold on and share share with everybody all of this information is totally shareable and i hope that you will share it because we need help getting the word out of what resources we have because we are that like that's what emergency management is tasked with is to share information and be a resource to the community so if i can do anything to help you i would totally do what i can to help even though i'm not there i can help so any questions i miss your faces <laughs> i miss having in person i so miss you all that's the one thing about all of this is i just miss people like you know all of my friends all of you i just miss you so and i appreciate all that you do hey you want to turn the cameras on yeah, yeah, turn the cameras on so I can see you and wave to you. I wish I could give you all hugs because I really do love you and miss you. That's the one thing about this meeting. I'm struggling because we really were so much more effective in person than we, we you know, we had like sometimes 30 people. So, and now we have, let's see eight, 12, 13, which is good. I'm thankful for all of you to be here, but I just really miss everybody. So I'm gonna stop the recording.